Well, the first time that we talked about doing Orphan, Sebastian and I had sat down uh, meeting again for the first time in years. Um, and Sebastian had just moved back from Los, Los Angeles, back into the Chicago area, and we met up for coffee one night and started talking about different projects that we'd want to work on together. Um, and uh, or Orphans was one of the, the script ideas that Sebastian had at the time and told me about it, and it sounded absolutely fascinating. So I really hope we were able to work on it. But there were some elements of the story, uh, technical elements that would have that we would have had to work through and weren't exactly sure how we would, um, you know, for instance, building a robot. So we needed to find somebody to do that. And so we figured that we would just table that idea for a little bit. And uh, that's that led us into actually doing our first project with Any Moment Productions, which was one night uh, that I was also in. Um, after one night, Sebastian and I started talking about other projects we might want to approach, either another feature or uh, a short and um, Sebastian decided that a, a short would be a, a great next project to do. So uh, we decided to, to tackle orphans if we could and started talking about different ways that we can put some of these elements, the technical elements together to really bring this uh, alternative history world um, together and make it a reality. So uh, there was still the obstacle of coming up with somebody to build a robot suit and not just any robot suit, but uh, one that embodied a, a very particular style um, I think Sebastian was going for uh, a steampunk style. And uh, I, I happened to know a metalsmith. Um, but by the time we started talking about this project, I had become better friends with Mike Gorell, who is a master metalsmith. And uh, I, he was the first person that came to mind. So I thought I would give him a call and see if he'd be interested in the project. And I, I knew that he had built uh, various costume pieces uh, before um, different parts of uh, suits of armor and um, weapons, you know, axes and swords and things like that for, for Halloween costumes and, and whatnot. So I thought it would probably be a good challenge that he would be open to. Um, so basically, uh, I got a call from Tony, uh, you know, saying that he had this friend that was working on a, a project and maybe needed a uh, robot costume. So probably about... I would say fall of 2010, uh, Sebastian and I met with Mike Gorell, and uh, Seb Sebastian presented his idea for um, for the short for Orphans, and he gave him a copy of the script, and kind of explained stylistically what he was going after, um, and uh, Mike said that he was definitely interested and up to the challenge, and he had some ideas of his own. So there were some subsequent meetings after that to. Um, to look at sketches. Mike came up with some sketches for uh, robot suits based on Sebastian's specifications and, and descriptions in the script itself. Um, and so little by little, it started to come together. A lot of those sketches became solidified and Sebastian was very happy with what Mike brought to the table and um, I was as well, it was a fantastic work. So we decided to get to work, start constructing the robot suit. You know, the, the biggest challenge, I guess, would have been was uh, actually making it look good and uh, still able to move. Uh, I actually went back through a couple of different uh, books on actually making medieval armor to, to make sure that, you know, all his parts were covered and that he was still able to, uh, to function, to do what he needed to do, like walk, uh, you know, pick stuff up. Um, initially, we were just going to film it from the front. So uh, the suit weighed about half as much as it ended up weighing. Uh, so we decided that, you know, the full back had to be covered. Uh, so Tony, I'm sure, went through rigorous training uh, to be able to actually wear it for hours at a time. Mike has a uh, metal studio that I would go to. From um, He would build piece by piece parts of the robot suit, and I would go in for a fitting. And, uh, you know, we just shape things. First, the arm piece. No, I think uh, first the chest piece started with and uh, was just the heaviest piece of the whole, the whole suit. And uh, after that, uh, the arm pieces, the leg pieces, uh, the head, and uh, smaller, smaller pieces came into play. Um, so over a course of many months, it involved going back to Mike's metal shop and uh, just doing fitting after fitting and uh, Sebastian would look look things over and and stylistically tweak, you know what um, 
different parts of the robot suit to make it look a little bit more uh, unique and not, not necessarily uh, time period specific, um, but to fit this alternative history feel that he was going after. And so just, just something a little bit um, outside of reality, but still rooted in, in a very real sense of history as well. Uh, the chess piece was probably, in my opinion, the most important piece um, to make that look strong, to make it tie the rest of the suit together. Um, that and uh, the headpiece, obviously. We went through, uh, I think, six or seven different sketches uh, before we actually came up with a robot's face. Uh, I think I built three of them, and uh, we decided, you know, from there which one we were going to choose. Wanted to make them, you know, actually look uh, a little bit human, but not too much. Uh, you know, kind of have empathy. Uh, besides that, uh, you know, the hands, you know, obviously had to be well articulated. Tony still had to be able to pick stuff up. Uh, keeping that kind of robotic looking but still functional was, uh, was pretty difficult. Suit ended up weighing uh, altogether about 60 pounds. Uh, there was a pretty good trick uh, trying to keep it balanced so all that weight wasn't at one point. Uh, early on, we found out uh, that the shininess, just naturally with working with the metal, uh, grinding and whatnot, it uh, gets very shiny. And uh, so we had to dull that down. We ended up using a, a finish, so it looked uh, a little bit older, a little bit heavier. Actually making it functional was the hardest part, to be able to have a man inside it uh, and actually have him able to move and be covered is probably the most difficult part. Uh, lighting the, uh, the robot chest, uh, we went through a couple different uh, ways to do it. Uh, we went back and forth between uh, colored lights and we ended up with just the white lights uh, since the movie was just going to be in black and white at the end. Uh, went through a couple different ways to actually light the chest to make it a little bit softer. Uh, we actually used a, just a small piece of uh, plastic sheeting actually diffused the light so it didn't look like just two bright LEDs in the chest. So once we had the basic form done and we knew it was going to be functional and that Tony could move in it, uh, we really started to add uh, some of the cooler details to it. Uh, Sebastian actually found uh, an old steam gauge that we were able to attach um, and the radio dial is actually made from a, a busted old thermostat. It was those little additions I think that, that really brought it to life. Uh, you know we put the piping on the back, uh, we were actually able to bodge something up to actually shoot a little steam which was pretty cool we did that kind of on the cuff. Uh, actually seeing Tony fully suit up for the first time uh, was pretty cool. It was the first time that the suit had actually come together fully uh, and it actually was starting to look like something as opposed to just a bunch of pieces in my basement. Um, once we had the paint on in the fitting and the lights, I mean that was really when I actually started to like it. <laughs> the suit itself weighed in at about 60-65 pounds somewhere around there and it was which might not sound very heavy, but honestly, when, when you're wearing all of that metal, uh, it is quite cumbersome. Um, and we were originally planning to start filming in March or April, so it, we were transitioning into spring, and it was very perfect weather to, um, to be filming and to, and to wear uh, so much, such a heavy costume, which we know would be uh, very hot to wear. So we were trying to get into filming before, um, summer, Chicago summer kicked in. Uh, however, it, it did, the filming did get pu pushed back a little bit and I think we started in July. Um, and so, you know, the heat was really kicking in and we had some, <laughs> some very hot days. So we had to develop a very specific process for suiting up in the robot outfit to, to be as time efficient as we could um, and keep everything on track and on schedule. Um, so it, some of the first shoots that we had I would put on the entire suit and sort of wait in the wings and, and be ready to go. But uh, with setting up shots and 
um, you know, checking angles and things like that. There was a lot of uh, standing around. And so we, we quickly realized that what we really needed to do was put on as very little of the robot costume as we needed to up until the point of uh, until Sebastian said action. And um, that became a little bit more efficient. But there, there, were, there were times during takes where I could only keep that robot suit on for, you know, minutes, really. And I would get overheated pretty quickly. And, and uh, I was surrounded by an incredible crew of people who were extremely helpful. The, the, the way that Mike Garrell had built this suit, um, it's, my movements were, were limited in a lot of ways, but it, it worked perfectly for the robot. I mean, there wasn't, to be honest, there wasn't much acting I had to do <laughs> because the suit would only move in certain ways, but it made it all the more believable and played off that much better on film. Um, just the way, uh, you know, the metal rubbed together and, and the suit sort of wore itself in over the course of the filming. Um, and it looks, it, it was heavy to wear, but it looks 10 times heavier on film. Um, so it can sometimes have a, a menacing effect when you're watching back. Um, so that was very exciting to see. Um, this project actually kind of scared the hell out of me at first. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to pull it off, uh, if I was technically able, you know, to actually get this to work. Um, so thankfully, Tony, you know, through his many fittings, uh, you know, I kind of tripped my way through it and uh, learned a lot. So once it came time to actually watch, watch the final product, uh, I was just absolutely astounded. I think Sebastian did a remarkable job with the editing and, and really getting... Uh, some beautiful angles and the style and the tone was captured uh, even more beautifully than, than when I read the, the original script. And so watching myself as the robot uh, was a little bit of a surreal experience actually, because it was, it, was, it was much different than watching myself in say one night, you know, where I wasn't wearing a robot suit. Uh, and so it was like I was watching, I was watching myself, but it was like I was watching somebody else with this robot. I, I didn't feel like I was actually watching myself because there were some scenes where, um, I remember shooting them, but the way I remember them from inside a robot suit is much different than how I imagine them looking outside as an audience, as a viewer. Uh, so that, that was, it was very exciting to see the final product. And, and I think it was, the robot suit just it came off so well. It worked so well in this story. Uh, I'm very proud of the work that we did. Uh, and then finally, you know, seeing it in the finished production, I mean, you know, it, it was pretty great. It was pretty fulfilling.